possible that you're not thinking, you're only arranging your prejudice. Uh, well, let's think about that for a minute. First of all, there are some people that think that logic is intelligence. Well, not so, not correct. Logic is only a phase in the thinking process. Well, Neil Bohr is wondering whether you are aware about your thinking process. Are you thinking or are you being logical? Because logic requires you to associate some events to make a connection based on past experiences. While on the other hand, thinking requires critical analysis in order to come up uh, with a concrete evaluation of the situation. I'm here today to talk about the fact that philosophy opens the mind, but how much of your mind are you using? Okay, so talking about Neil Bohr and the possibility that most people are being logical and not using their entirety of their minds, Let's then define philosophy. What is philosophy? It's interesting to know that philosophy is quite a practice that we all carry out every day, but maybe we carry it out poorly. Philosophy requires you to know a thing beyond its name, know its nature, know its characteristics. You just don't know it by a name or a tag or a color. You understand the process. You, you become aware of it. You unravel it. You study it in order to understand its full identity. Only then can you say that you know a thing. Philosophy is knowing the fundamental nature of a truth, of an idea, object or subject. You have to understand that philosophy is something that if only you knew how well it would work for you, you are bigger, broader, stronger than you actually think. But how do you arrive at this conclusion right here? What is your mission? How do you know that? Your passion, how do you know that? Many people do things because they see someone else doing it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But wouldn't it be better if you knew why you were doing something? Philosophy is asking you to understand why you're choosing your ideas, your opinions, your culture, your value. Philosophy is asking you to think critically. Because only until you think critically, you don't know the thing. We're all philosophers, and I know you don't go by the tag philosopher. But a man's major responsibility is to think. I want you to just ask yourself the question whether you are thinking as much as you can. Because only until you do so do you understand your actual power. This actually here is the circle of learning experience, or the circle of the learning experience. You feel, you do, you watch, you experience. Philosophy is saying that part of your mind and the power of your mind is that you should use your emotions. But the forces outside of you tell you not to. Philosophy is such a broad field. Philosophy is so broad, we couldn't go into details of the fields tonight. But I've been able to separate it into two major groups, the macro and the micro. The macro, you know, understanding the philosophy of macro, the macro sphere, what that implies is all things are connected macroscopically. It's only on the micro level that things are separate and divisible. So a good example of macro would be generation, time, world, eternity. So let me break it down. My father, me, my children after me, and their children, that is a generation. And in a hundred years, we have about three or four generations. So, on a macro level, 
if we were to understand the world, we would be looking at generation in time, time in the world, the world in the universe. We're focusing on the micro, which is the individual, me, you. On the micro level, a philosophy, therefore, will arise from me trying to understand me. And, but first, what's my process? My process is being born. I'm born a baby, uh, a toddler, an adolescent, a teenager, an adult, different phases of adulthood, and then the end, death. Our focus today is on a micro view. And please also note that it's from a micro view that things become divided and separate. That's where all our problems begin. The micro viewpoint. Micro limited viewpoint. Okay, so now that we have understood our focus today, this is where you ask me, what do we feel or think? Because there are too many things happening in the world. If philosophy opens the mind, then how do I begin the process of opening my mind? Great question then. The first process is to be aware. You have to first be aware. You have to know what it is that is going on in your mind. And you don't begin by thinking, you begin by becoming aware. I'm aware of you, you are aware of me. I'm explaining a process by which we can understand how our mind works. One thing, one part of awareness is being aware of what's happening outside of you, which is you being aware of me, me being aware of you. The other awareness that's also your responsibility is to be aware of what's happening in your mind and then be aware of what's happening in your body, like your sensations. You have to first become aware. Only upon awareness do you know what it is you're dealing with. Yeah? Okay, we're gonna stop there and go into how philosophy has helped me. I love thinking. I'm a thinker. Only until people started calling me a philosopher did I realize, oh, there's actually a, a name for what I like to do. But upon discovering who I am, I realized that I didn't like tags. I don't like tags. Some of my friends call me alpha female. I don't like it. So I can't appreciate it big names, big titles, I don't like it. But I only understood that I didn't like titles when I discovered who I was. Philosophy showed me my own power. Philosophy showed me that I have the power to be, to choose, to think, to will. And my only limit was the limit I put on myself. So why society was telling me on the outside that this is what a woman can, cannot do, my mind was telling me something else that you can do anything you choose. And it's, it's intriguing to discover because one thing that has occurred in my life that I think a lot of people find equally fascinating is the fact that I noticed that through understanding how my mind works, I understood that a person could not validate or invalidate me. You can't make me feel big or make me feel small. I am. I understand who I am. So whether you compliment me or you don't compliment me, I don't rise or fall by your compliments. It's such raw form of power that I found it to be such a privilege to understand that kind of power existed, to be in charge of yourself. Now, because I also want you to understand what I understand, I'm gonna ask us to quickly check out uh, Sigmund Freud. He is the father of psychoanalysis. Sigmund Freud came up with a theory about the entire expanse of the human mind. Now this is a theory, it's not scientifically proven, but much of uh, the theoretical world understands that mind and Sigmund Freud make for a perfect sentence. So that's why he's our reference this evening. According to the theory of Sigmund Freud, the human mind is a makeup of the conscious, subconscious, and pre-conscious. 
But what I've been able to do today is just separate it into two to make it easy for you. Particularly in a world where you're told to shrink your emotions and act tough, where you're told to be this way and not be that way, do this and don't do that, do you understand that you have so much power, but you do not know the power that you have until you understand your mind? Now, real quick, Sigmund Freud says that our conscious mind, the part of the mind where we use for thinking, logic, our uh, one plus one, our uh, you know, good morning, good evening, how are you, fine, I'm coming, I'm going, that level of our mind is only 10%. Now, that would be because they're only being logical. And when you're being logical, there's not a lot of thinking going on. The power of your mind requires you to think. Only then are you in full control of your mind's capacity. Only then are you a man or woman of power. Sigmund Freud says, your subconscious is where you hold meaning, you hold imagination, you hold curiosity, you hold creativity, you hold discovery in your subconscious. In fact, uh, your subconscious is 90% of your mind. Your subconscious is therefore the greater part of your mind. So how is it we, we exist in a world where we're told to not feel? Meanwhile, you need to feel slash be aware in your mind for you to be in charge of your now. In this theory from Sigmund Freud, I have discovered that if we understood this, then we should every day evaluate the power of our minds. Because if you are not thinking for yourself to be able to determine who you want to be, self-determine what you want to be, then you become a shallow puppet of culture. And by that I mean that who you are right now is a makeup of what someone else thought about. That's why you see things happen in your society and you can't question it. You can't think. You can't question. You can't challenge things because you don't even know that you should challenge them. Another one. Who has heard that if you don't have money, you should hide your face? Who's heard that? All right. This is working. Who has heard or who believes in Destiny Helper? Who here believes in Destiny Helper? If you don't tell the truth, the show is over. And I'm expecting everybody to put up their hands. Yeah? So, I'm not telling you what to believe. I'm asking you, these things that you believe, these things you hear, you repeat them, repeat them, repeat them, and before you know it, it becomes your philosophy, it becomes a thing that you practice. My question is, have you run this these opinions through the refinery of your mind? Have you been able to check all these things, these words, these ideas, these concepts? Have you checked them through the refinery of your mind for faults, for cracks, for error, for faulty logic? Have you checked them for inadequacy? Have you checked them for lies? Because if you haven't done that, then you are actually a slave. Someone else is thinking for you. Someone else is telling you what to believe. Someone else is telling you how your life should be. Many of you are actually afraid. And the only reason you're afraid is because you do not have the power of knowledge. If you had the understanding of the power of your mind, you would not be afraid to carry out some actions, to stand alone, to say this is who I am and I'm willing to be this, regardless of who stands with me, by me, for me. We cannot advance our cause as humans if we do not advance our thoughts. We cannot become better people if our thoughts are not better. If we do not refine our thoughts, we are not refined people. So in conclusion, I'd like to say to you that the God of the universe, the universe in the man, is the human mind. And how your mind works is that first, you must become aware. Know what is happening in here, out there. First, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. 
philosophy is asking you to journey through the love of wisdom to discover things in their actual nature, to know things for what they're actually supposed to be in character, in nature, in characteristics, in patterns, study things, know them, understand them, evaluate them, and figure out whether they fit into who you are, other than not you reject it and give no apologies for it. The idea that will change your world will come from inside of you, not outside of you. So I'm hoping I have spoken to people who are not only philosophers, but are free people. Thank you.